champs. The Lakers agreed to a trade for Dennis Schroeder before free agency began, then picked up six man of the year Montrez Harrell and Marcus Gasol over the weekend. They also re-signed KCP and Markeith Morris. As for the Clippers, they picked up Serge Ibaka and Luke Kennard, and they re-signed Marcus Morris as well. So, Perk, who has the better roster on paper between these two LA teams? Of course, they don't play on paper, but who would you say? Oh, it's the Lakers, Rachel. Rob Palenka went out there in, in free agency, and he did his thing. He went out there and got free agents like the Lakers lost and didn't win the championship. When you look at him getting Dennis Schroeder, uh, Montrez Harrell, Montrez Harrell, who we stole from the Clippers, who was the sixth man of the year, and then you go out there and get Wes Matthews for 3.6, one of the best two-way players in the game today. Not the best, but one of the best. And then you go land, and then you go and land Marcus Saul, a veteran big. That was crucial. Yeah, the answer has to be both these teams are awesome. They're they're my favorites to go one and two in the West. But look, the Lakers just won a championship and they got better. So the answer has to be Lakers, Lakers. Dennis Schroeder adds an ingredient they just didn't have last year. A water bug point guard who can create his own shot. I think he'll do a great job running pick and roll with LeBron and AD. And Marcus Gasol is a perfect fit with their starting five if they decide to start him. Same level of interior defense as Dwight and JaVale. Maybe even a little better. Except he can shoot threes and space the floor for Anthony Davis. So all of a sudden when Anthony Davis is posting up, the lane is clear. Anthony Davis is pick and roll diving to the rim. The lane is clear. And oh, by the way, if you decide to put your center on Anthony Davis and try to hide your power forward on Marcus Gasol, he can take that guy down to the weight room. You throw in Montrez Harrell, maybe keep him in a six-man kind of roll off the bench. I think the Lakers had an amazing offseason. Clippers are doing great, but when you win the championship, you get the benefit of the doubt. It really does seem like a long time ago, guys, right, that the narrative out there was, gee, I don't know if players want to play with LeBron. Kyrie left. Kevin Durant didn't want to come. Kawhi Leonard didn't want to come to L. Lakers and play with him. Guess what? Guys seem to be wanting to play on that Lakers team. And such an interesting thing happened with the Lakers last year, and I wanted to ask you guys about it because last summer, I said once they built that roster, gee, I'm worried about their perimeter defense. I was very concerned about where that was going to come from. And if you look at the numbers of where this Lakers roster, their core players were the previous season, look at their defensive numbers from last season, you can see where that concern was. But then look at this past season. Every single guy got better. I mean, much better. And, and I would say this is in some ways the Frank Vogel effect. This is in some ways LeBron getting serious on defense the way he hadn't in the previous few years. But it has sort of made me wonder, how do we account for this thing when looking at rosters to say, huh, some of these guys might be so much better consistently one through eight there than they were the previous season. Zach, when you see those numbers, what do you do when you evaluate rosters? Well, a lot of those numbers, those are team defense or individual defensive ratings. Those are really heavily dependent on your team context. So when you add in Anthony Davis and you add in engaged LeBron James and you retool the team around them, everybody's defensive numbers are going to get better. So I don't put a huge amount of stock into those numbers. I just think the Lakers got better talent, including a defensive player of the year level player in Anthony Davis, a coach who's going to stress defense from day one. And they came out with the mindset of we're building our team defense and out. And when you do all those things together, yeah, everybody's numbers are going to improve. I don't think and, – and, and everyone bought in. Guys who maybe hadn't bought in as much in the past bought in. So that's what happens, and I do think they can carry that over uh, into this season. And as you pointed out, Rachel, their perimeter depth, just as good now as it was when they won in the bubble, maybe even better. And, and Zach, you hit a great point by bringing up Frank Vogel. When you look at Coach Vogel, especially when he was with the Pacers, they were always at the top defensively. So Frank Vogel brings that defensive mindset. And once he got LeBron James and Anthony Davis to buy in, it, then it's a ripple effect. Now you see Caldwell Pope, he's buying in on the defensive end. And then you seen uh, Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee last year, the way that they had a defensive impact. But now you add Dennis 
Dennis Schroeder, who's a guy that could pick up 94 feet, who's feisty on the defensive end, who gets you extra possession, along with a guy like Montrez Harrell. Look, we praise Montrez Harrell about his offensive package and his 19 points a game, but he's great at taking charges. He's an underrated shot blocker. And then we all know uh, locked in Mark Gasol, what he brings to the table, along with Wesley Matthews locking in on the wing position at three points. Six million. Hey, it is. It looks like pure gold to me for the Los Angeles Lakers. And on the Clippers side, Serge Ibaka, I think, makes up for a lot of losses there. But Zach, do you think they're done? Because a true ball floor general, it feels like they still need to fill out on that roster. Well, there just aren't a lot of those players left unless they want to re-sign Reggie Jackson. It's getting to be slim pickings. But to answer your question, no, I don't think they're done. And I don't necessarily think there's a move that happens now or maybe even before the season. But I don't think the Clippers, as they stand right now, first of all, they have to add a couple of players. Second of all, I just don't think this is going to be the team that, ha that, is, that is playing for the title or playing in the playoffs after the trade. I think they'll tweak it a little bit. But Ibaka was a hugely important signing for them. I agree. Look, the Clippers dropped the ball. I thought they would be more aggressive this offseason. I thought that they would try to go out there and really pursue Rajon Rondo because that's what they're missing. They're missing that floor general. They're missing that veteran leader uh, to be on the ball club, to be that guy who controls the locker room outside of basketball. But they didn't go out there and they didn't be aggressive. To me right now, the Clippers are losing, especially the L.A. battle, but they're losing in the free agency battle. Battle tremendously. Serge Ibaka was a good pickup, but they needed to add more pieces, and they're not getting it done right now. Well, they got time before the trade deadline, still months away. We'll see how they tweak and uh, come up with a roster that's going to take them into the playoffs. I do want to move on to Gordon Hayward because he and the Hornets, so much action over the weekend. The dust hasn't <laughs> fully settled from free agency, but we still want your winners and losers. So, Jackie, we will start with you. Who is winning free agency? Oh, to me, it is most definitely the Lakers. You had Dennis Schroeder, you had Montrez Harrell. I, I haven't read anybody that saw that coming. And then you had one of my favorite NBA players of all time, Mark Gasol, who I know is a little older. He's not gonna, you know, his three-point shooting's falling off, but he's still one of the smartest, most savviest defensive players in the league. I picture him guarding Jokic for the Lakers when it comes time. I also love what Portland did in Atlanta. Those are my two runners up. Well, Jackie, you're absolutely right. The Lakers are the biggest biggest winner because of all the points you pointed out. But I love what the Celtics done, added uh, Tristan Thompson uh, to that roster and Jeff Teague. And then let's talk about the Phoenix Suns. They are winning big time. Getting Chris Paul, adding a guy like Jay Crowder, adding uh, um, another, another guy like Etron Moore, who a lot of people don't value. I'm looking at this Phoenix Suns roster, and they look pretty damn good on paper. Also, the Suns are such an exciting team going into this next season. It's so refreshing yeah, for Suns fans who have seen that team mismanaged for a very, very long time to be putting the right pieces together both last season and now going into this season. The Portland Trailblazers, I don't know how they could have done better considering yeah, what they their roster is. The Lakers, phenomenal, considering especially that Montrezl Harrell is not only a good player to pick up, he's going to be better on your team than he was for the Clippers just because of the fit with Anthony Davis and some of the other players that can cover up for Montrez's weaker defensive issues. A and then you also kind of weaken your opponent across the hallway, which I know is a big deal in Lakers Clippers land, whether they admit it or not. And then I'm going to throw one more in there. I don't know if this is technically free agency. I I'm just kind of lumping in the whole week with trades and the draft and everything else. But Philadelphia, Jackie, you and I have yes. talked so often about the fit between Joel right. Embiid and Ben Simmons. And the biggest issue when having that discussion is who are the players around them? I don't know if we have the 100%. numbers from our re researcher, Caesar, but if you look at these two guys when they were on the floor together just a couple years ago, they were plus 15. Mm. I mean, that you wouldn't right. look at that and say, God, those guys can't play together. They don't fit because they had spacing. They had other guys around them. And then you look at each season since then and how the numbers have gone down. Well, they didn't change into different players. It's because of the players around them. So Daryl Morey did such a good job switching out the players around them. They're not there yet at an ideal roster, but the improvement, I think, is such a fresh air, breath of fresh air for those two guys. They are in my winner's category for the week at large. For the other side of the coin though, Jackie, who are your losers? 
Well, I'm going to stick in Los Angeles. But again, we talked about Montrez Harrell walking across the hallway. He doesn't probably could just move his stuff from one locker to the next. I think that's a pretty big blow. And I'll tell you something that a lot of people aren't talking about, but they should be, is to Michael oh. Green going to the oh. Nuggets for me is also yep. a big loss for the Clippers. And remember we were talking about Rajon Ronder going across the hall with his stuff to the other locker. Not so fast. He ended up going to the Hawks. So... For me, the Clippers do not come out of this well. Here's the other thing. They did add Serge Ibaka, who I like. I'm, I probably like even a little better than Montrez Harrell because of what he can do. But he has a player option for 2021, Rachel and Perk. That means that if things start to go sour, he, Kawhi, Paul George, they can all walk in 2021. Mm -hmm. Well, well, my biggest loser is the Rockets. Here you got the, your two franchise guys asking to be traded right now, and you go out there and you sign Christian Woods. Look, Christian Woods is a good young player, but he's not moving the needle, and you let all these guys uh, walk away and don't make any type of moves to make your stars happy, especially James Harden, to try to keep him. So right now the biggest loser in free agency is the Houston Rockets. They're dropping the ball tremendously. But I would like to add one more thing. The Denver Nuggets are a loser right now to me because they lost Jeremy Grant. And I thought they should have did everything in their power to keep him, especially the way that he defends his length, size, athleticism, and in the Western Conference where you need a guy like that to watch LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, and all these athletic wings, even a Kevin Durant, and you let him walk away. I, I thought Denver really lost on that, on that with losing Jeremy Grant. Perk, I'm a little surprised to hear you put the Celtics in the winner's category. I, I like the Tristan Thompson signing, too. I think that it fills a need for them. I think that he will be a good, active, dedicated player for them, except for a few spots, relatively injury-free. But do you think that the Celtics roster got appreciably better? Would you put them as a winner, Jackie, or would you put them more as neutral? I would not put them as a winner. Gordon Hayward walked away for nothing. And I'm telling you, people don't understand how important Gordon Hayward was to the Celtics. This is a guy who put aside his ego, put aside the number of shots. He was the best facilitator on that team last year. And he, the shots that he did make, he was very efficient. Now, I get that everybody looks at the dollar signs. Was he worth $34 million? Would I have paid him what the Charlotte Hornets paid him if I were the Boston Celtics? No, I wouldn't. But he still walked away without you getting anything for him. I don't yes. consider that a win. Yeah. Well, I, I do. Go ahead. I, I, I do, Rachel and Jack. I consider it a win because I'm going to tell you why. He walked away and now give the keys to Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and you still have Kimball Walker. So you still have a big three. And then you have a, add a guy to the bench like Jeff Teague who's capable of giving you 15 to 16 points a night. And then you add Tristan Thompson, one of the best guys in, at the center position that can anchor a defense, switch one through five, is a lob threat at the basket, a center that they've been missing that the Celtics been needing. He brings us a certain type of tenacity. So I know I understand losing Gordon Haywood was was a little blow, but get, moving him out the way so that Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum could now flourish and take over, that's a huge win to me. And I really think that these guys could get it done. Well, time will tell, Perk. If you're right, we'll see. It's a competitive Eastern Conference. You've got Brooklyn that we know will get better with Kevin Durant coming back and Kyrie healthy. We know Miami. They're going to be dogs. And we know Milwaukee is ready to run. So we'll see what that Eastern Conference looks like and where the Celtics fall in there. Coming up, guys, we're going to talk a little bit more about Donovan Mitchell because he got a max extension this weekend. But he can trigger, wait for this, a $32 million increase to that deal if he makes an all-NBA team. We spoke about a few guys who got big extensions earlier in the show, but let's not forget about Donnie Mitch. If he makes an all-NBA team next season, he can trigger a 30% escalator clause that would turn the guaranteed $163 million base, still very good money, into $195 million. So, Jackie, what do you think Mitch's chance, Mitchell's chances are of getting that bag? Well, it's definitely trending in that direction, Rachel, but here's the problem. Think about the people that were not all NBA last year. Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, all because of injury. Joel Embiid, because people left him off their ballot. Jamal Murray, because maybe the rest of the world didn't know about him yet. There are five players right there who weren't all NBA. So I'm not saying it can happen, 
but it's a crowded field. It's a crowded field, but look, I said this before the bubble that this was an audition for Donovan Mitchell when he went to the bubble without Donovich, and he crossed his T's and dotted the I's and passed all tests. He proved to us that he's a number one option, and I believe he will make an all NBA team next season. Well, we'll get to watch it all play out. I want to get to this at the buzzer because, guys, Wizards general manager Tommy Shepard said on a conference call just in the last couple hours that despite reports to the contrary, John Wall, according to Tommy Shepard,